DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America. Tonight's star, Robert Montgomery. Our adventure began as a secret Air Force mission to inspect Pacific air bases in World War II. By way of preface, I wish one point to be understood. What follows is almost all out of memory. Therefore, the sequence of events may be rather uncertain. But any such discrepancies that exist are unimportant. My instinct then was not to remember, but to live. Twenty-three days on an open raft in the open Pacific. This is tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, The Raft. A true story starring Robert Montgomery as Eddie Rickenbacker. When the gas gauge of our plane hit zero... We quickly made all possible preparations for a forced landing in the Pacific. Adamson was on the flight deck, his back braced against a mattress. The others were flat on the floor or strapped to their bucket seats. I held a parachute against my face to protect myself against flying glass. Very little was said. There was very little to say. At one point, Adamson looked up at me. Rick, I, I hope you like the sea. I think we're going to spend a long time on it. Here we go. In a matter of minutes, Colonel Adamson and I were on the raft, pushing away from the sinking plane. Rick. Yeah, Hans? Where do you figure we are? Well, by the time we ran out of fuel, I think we'd overshot Canton Island by a pretty good piece. I figure we're drifting towards the Fiji Island. Or the Gilberts. Maybe. Jap's there. Yeah, I know. I was thinking, Eddie. What? Heck of a mess I got you into. How do you figure you got me into this? Well, when Hap Arnold picked someone to visit the Army Air Force units preparing for overseas action, someone he could trust to bring him an honest account of how we stand, he... He figured you were the one who could fill the bill, and he asked me to carry the message to Gosha. <laughs> We've seen a lot. We know a lot. That's right. Top secret stuff. Uh-huh. Eddie, they say the Japs have a drug. It loosens you up, makes you talk. Forget it. I've got my pistol loaded. Forget it, I said. Let's think of something pleasant. What, for instance? Well, it doesn't matter much, Hans. Looks like we're going to be around here for a while with plenty of time to do nothing but think and remember. And so began our waiting. The sun went down swiftly. A cold mist gathered on the sea and the moon came up. Why I thought of it then, I don't know. But out of the shadow, out of the gloom, came a picture. Our old frame house on Livingston Street in Columbus, Ohio. The living room with the shades drawn. And eight kids, strangely quiet. And then Mother talked to us. You will never see your father again. He's gone. But his spirit continues to live in all of you tried to be as good as he was, always. Now, we must not be afraid. Your father was never afraid. He had faith. He had faith in God, in himself, and in this wonderful country he came to many, many years ago. There's only one way to stop fear, and that is through faith. Mother. What is it, Eddie? I'm not going back to school. But, Eddie, you're too young to leave school. You're only 12 years old. We need the money, don't we? 
Well, yes. I'll go back to school when I can. Maybe work nights or something, but... But right now, I'm going to get a job. We need the money. Eddie. Eddie, I was... I was just thinking. Yes, Mother? I was just thinking how... How little you look sitting there in your father's chair. So you want a job here in the Federal Glass Works? That's right. Hmm, kind of young, ain't you? I'm 14, and I'm finished school. Kind of puny, ain't you? I'm as strong as a horse, and I can fight every kid on my block. What's your name? Eddie, Eddie Rickenbacker. You say you're 14 and finished school? That's what I said. <laughs> I think you're lying but the clock, but I can't prove it. Okay, start tomorrow. That was a long time ago. And now on a tiny raft on the Pacific, day dawned and brought a glassy, sizzling sea. One of our boys, Sergeant Alex, was in a bad way. He was only a kid, barely 22. Hi, Captain Rick. How you doing, boy? Well, not so good. Ah, you're young. You can take it. Well, maybe, but... See, I'm just out of a hospital. Oh. Yeah, they, they yanked out my appendix. I was just flying back to Australia to join my outfit. Well, now, you stick with it. Won't be long. Yeah, I know. Won't be long. Atta boy. You keep at it. You're a good gimper. A, what? Gimper. Well, what's what's a gimper? <laughs> Don't you know? No. Well, never mind here. Take my handkerchief and tie it over your face. It'll shade you a bit from the sun. All right. Thanks, Captain Rick. That's okay. And don't worry about me. I'll I'll be, you know, uh, what you said. A gimper? Yeah. A gimper. A good gimper. <laughs> Boy. That's a crazy phrase to reach back for. A gimper. That was when I was 16. The time Lee Freyer first sprung it on me. 16, that would be right. 1906. I walked into the plant of the Freyer Miller Automobile Company. My eyes feasted on the lathes, the drill presses, the screeching steel saws. I knew, even back then, that this was my world. Looking for someone, Sonny? The boss. Well, that's me. You, Mr. Freyer? Yeah. I guess maybe I ought to tell you that I'm coming to work here tomorrow morning. Oh, you are, are you? And who hired you? Nobody. Yet. But I'll be on the job here in the morning. If I'm worth anything to you, you can keep me. If not, you can fire me. But one way or the other, I'm starting tomorrow. Hey, you. You want me, Mr. Freyer? So you were serious? Sure. Got a name? Eddie Rickenbacker? That's a pretty nice job of sweeping you are doing. Thanks. Uh, tell me, can you do anything besides sweep? Well, I've been working for two years at the Evans Garage. Before that, I was with the Federal Glass Works, but automobiles are what I'm interested in. That's why I'm set on working here. You go to school? In a way. What way? By mail. International Correspondence School. Well. Studying automotive engineering. Uh, let me ask you something, Sonny. Sure. You know the difference between a gimmick and a gimper? Um, no, sir, I, I don't. Well, a gimmick is a large hole made up of little holes, see? And a gimper is the same thing, only more powerful. Keep it up, Sonny. You'll get along. Seems to me like you're a good gimper. <laughs> For six days, the raft hardly seemed to move. But by our watches, we knew we were drifting. Each morning, the sun rose just a little bit later. 
This meant that we were inching west and south. Towards what? We tried not to think of that. Four oranges. Didn't last so long, did they, Eddie? Last them? Uh Uh-huh. From this point on... From this point on, we'll have to feed off our imaginations. You dream up a menu, Hans. Come on, it's all on the house. Steak. Medium rare. A toss green salad. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Uh, no. Now you're too fancy. You know what I'd settle for? Tell me. Just a plain old malted milk. <laughs> malted milk. I hadn't had one in years. Never forget one I had back in 1907. A gangling kid perched on a stool at Schultz's ice cream parlor. And Lee Freyer walking in. Been looking for hmm? you, Rick. Oh, I, I'm just on my way to the shop, Mr. Freyer. Rick, I, you're not going back. I'm fired? No, but I think you'll want to make this change. How old are you, Rick? Seventeen last month. Seventeen, huh? And you know every gimmick on an automobile from timer to transmission. You bet I do. Well, in that case, Rick, how would you like to quit here and come along with me over to the Columbus Buggy Company, help design and build a new type of touring car for them? Are you kidding me, Mr. Freyer? No, I'm dead serious. You're only 17, Rick, but I'm offering you the job of experimental engineer. Who, me? Experimental engineer? That's right. I'm going over as chief engineer, and you'll be my number one man. Twenty bucks a week. What about it? Is it a deal? Oh, boy, you bet your boots it is. Gosh, 20 bucks a week. Hey, hey, Mr. Schultz, another mullet. Double thick. The eighth day on the raft was another hot, flat calm. It was a long time since those oranges. Didn't help our stomachs any to look down and see dolphin and mackerel and thousands of smaller fish. It was the afternoon of the eighth day that... Hans read from the Bible. It was from Matthew, I think. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be? Co-? What's the matter, Hans? Don't move, Eddie. Huh? Shh. A bird, Eddie. Right over your head. It, it's going to lighten your hat. Don't move. It's on. Can, can you grab him? I'll try. Easy. Easy. Don't miss, Eddie. Don't miss. I, uh, I won't. You got him. Oh, boy. Is he, is he fat, Eddie? He's fat enough. It's food. Food? Oh, cut it up. We'll, fast. He'll cut it up fast enough. Hans. Yes? You were reading the service. Go on. For your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take, therefore, no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall be. At that moment, I thought again of the day so long ago, and my mother talking to eight of us, eight kids, and the way she spoke when she said, There is only one way to stop fear, and that is through faith. And I know now as well as I know my own name. It was our faith in a supreme being that brought us that food. Listening to the DuPont Cavalcade of America, starring Robert Montgomery as Eddie Rickenbacker in The Raft, and sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. And now here's Bill Hamilton speaking for the DuPont Company. At the big furniture shows in Chicago and Grand Rapids this year, more than half the furniture shown was modern in style. Much of it was light in color, blonde. Blonde is the trade term for bleached. Furniture is bleached by treating the wood with a chemical solution containing DuPont Albone hydrogen peroxide. Albone does the job, actually, by releasing oxygen 
which combines with the coloring matter in the wood to form colorless compounds. As you and I would say, it takes out the color. Thus, a great deal of the handsome modern furniture that is so popular nowadays is made possible by another product of chemical science. One of the DuPont Company's Better Things for Better Living Through Chemistry. The DuPont Cavalcade continues, starring Robert Montgomery as Eddie Rickenbacker in The Raft. That afternoon, the afternoon of our eighth day on the raft, it clouded over and the air turned cool and then cold. And as twilight dropped, the heavens seemed to open up. Something, someone was on our side, all right. We rested then. In one day, we had our seagull. That was our food. And now we had water, too. Glory be. That night, I slept a little. And my dreams were of rain, not the gusty, sheet-like rain of the tropics, but the rain of another time and another place. France, April 29th, 1917, and the skin-soaking, soul-soaking rain that had turned our airfield at Issoudan into a mass of mud. Morning, Lieutenant Rickerbacker. Why so glum, Sergeant? Uh, guys, never let up on me. It ain't funny no more. What? The ribbon I take on account of my name. What's the matter with your name? Kraft. Spelled with a K. That's the matter. I'll forget it. Try and forget it. Nobody lets me. It ain't my fault I have to have a crowd sounding name. Look, my name didn't come over on the Mayflower either, you know. You ain't done bad by it, Lieutenant. I guess there ain't a more famous name in automobile racing than yours. Many's the time I had people come to me, especially lately, and say that I should change it. Change it? Why? It was given to me by my father. There wasn't a better man or a better American than William Rickenbacker. You know what I did when they said I should change my name, that it was too German, too long? You know what I did? What? I made it longer. I added a middle initial, V, Eddie V. Rickenbacker. It's a mouthful, and I like it. <laughs> and here's what you tell the boys when they rib you about your name. Our commanding officer's name Plotz. The adjutant is Offenberg. And the transportation officer is Flugel. <laughs> We're the Kaiser's flying carpenters and craft... You're a charter member. Lieutenant Rickerbacker. Yeah, what is it? German fighter planes reported passing over Panamuson. Okay. You going up, Lieutenant? I'm going up. The Kaiser's yelling for his flying carpenters. Rick. Hey, Rick. Are you all right? Huh? Oh. <coughs> oh. What is it? Well, the way you were tossing around, you almost upset the raft. <laughs> I was in a dogfight with a German pilot. <laughs> Did they get him? <laughs> sure thing. But it was nip and tuck all the way. And just squeezed through. Seems like I make a habit of just squeezing through. Eastern Airlines announces the departure of Flight 21... Flight 21, the Mexican flyer. Flight 21, now leaving from gate number four. After the First World War, I had faith in aviation, commercial aviation. I remember how my friends had pled with me not to give up everything I had, to put everything on the line the way I did to get an outfit called Eastern Airlines going. I could see the day coming when there would be thousands of transport planes in the air and people would be clamoring for seats. If we could only get dependability up and cost down, and it was beginning to happen. I knew we had a lot to learn yet, the hard way, back there in 1934. Captain Eddie, excuse me. Yeah, Perry. We may have trouble getting into Atlanta. It's thickening up fast. Don't worry about me. I'm in no hurry. If you have to, let's go back to Charlotte. Okay, Captain. The plane droned on. Suddenly, light stabbed through a thin spot of the foggy murk. We were low, too low. Suddenly, the left wing scraped against something. Treetops. 
Feeling any better tonight, Rick? You tell me, Doc. I won't kid you. You're plenty busted up. I'll make it. Good. Well, get some sleep. Uh, one favor. Sure. Turn the radio on, will you? You'd be better off without it. Well, music kind of soothes, you know. Okay. Let there be music. Thanks, Doc. I'll see what I can get for you. At the district attorney states that an investigation of the situation will begin at once. Oh, not this. And here's the latest news on the condition of Eddie Rickenbacker. Hey, leave that on. Atlanta, Georgia. Captain Eddie Rickenbacker, famed World War Ace, is at the point of death tonight in Piedmont Hospital. Last reports from the hospital state that the famous flyer and former automobile racing champion is not expected to survive the night. What? Captain Rickenbacker's career began on the dirt automobile racing track. Rick, what are you doing? The water bottle on the table. Give it to me. What for? Give it to me. No, I... Will you give me that bottle? All right, but... Now get out of the way. Obituaries, eh? Well, you can omit the flowers. (laughs) Nobody's counting me out yet. That's a pretty good pitching arm for a corpse, eh, Doc? What do you say? On the twelfth day, the twelfth long day of waiting, eight of us on three rafts on the long and empty Pacific. On the twelfth day, a strong wind came up. It battered us mercilessly. Every rise and fall of the raft was like a knife cut. Sergeant Alex all that day kept mumbling incoherently in Polish phrases about his mother and his girl, Snooks. About 3 a.m., 3 a.m., I heard a long sigh. Rick. Yeah? It's Sergeant Alex. I... I think he's dead. That was our 13th morning. I have hardly a clear remembrance of anything that happened during the next few days. Your mind plays all sorts of funny games with you when you're drifting aimlessly on an ocean and death seems very near. I remember gazing at the clouds, watching them take on the most fantastic shapes. Beautiful women, birds, elephants. The forms were so vivid, so concise, so positive that I felt I was drifting in some lost world, peopled by... Long lost souls. The 19th day dawned. Heavily overcast. The sea was rough and the white caps danced along the waves. I hear a plane. A plane. Listen. We watched it. Flying low and fast about five miles away. We shouted. We waved our hands. We did what we could, but it flew off. And once again, alone. On the 20th day, we saw two planes. The sound of their motors was strong, resonant. And long after they disappeared below the horizon, the song, sound lingered on. They... they never saw us. There'll be others. We've drifted close to land, some kind of land. Must be. They flew right by. Maybe tomorrow we'll see one that won't go by. On the 23rd morning, the sun rose, and within half an hour, it turned terribly hot. I watched for seaweed and debris, anything suggestive of land. I I was worried. I, I wondered if we drifted past land, if we were again out in the open sea, drifting away from the air lanes, away from rescue. And then we heard it. He sees us, Eddie. He's flying low, and he, and he sees us. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, merciful God. And so ended our 23 days on the emptiness of the Pacific. We survived. All but one survived. We never doubted we would. Because we had faith. I think of this often as I read my paper and listen to my radio. Today, the whole world seems to be adrift on some ocean of fear. Yet I still have faith. We all must have faith. 
And if we keep that faith, we will survive. to Robert Montgomery and the Cavalcade Players for tonight's story. And now, here's Bill Hamilton speaking for the DuPont Company. Perhaps you have no art gallery near you, but you have seen colored reproductions of the old masters, Rembrandt, Goya, Franz Hals, and the rest. What struck you most in their paintings? Almost certainly, their superb use of color. Where they wanted to catch the eye and draw it quickly to one area, they used bright tones. Clean, sharp reds, yellows, and greens. In other areas, almost always in the backgrounds, they use deep tones. Dark, rich wines and blues, purples, or greens. They knew these deep colors were more dramatic. A perfect background for objects or people. Today, this use of deep colors as a background is becoming ever more popular in interior decoration. You've seen walls painted in deep colors in room settings in furniture stores and illustrations in magazines. And probably, you've noticed the thing Rembrandt and his contemporaries discovered long ago, that somehow a room with deep color on the walls is richer looking. The furnishings take on new beauty against a dark, dramatic background. It's a curious fact, too, that people look better against such a background. The secret of the old master's is being put to use today to make America's homes more inviting, more colorful, more friendly. Perhaps you've thought of using a deep tone on the walls of your home. If you have, you'll be glad to know DuPont paint dealers are now selling DuPont Americana colors in flat wall paint. These are nine basic colors which can be used just as they come from the can. Or they can be intermixed easily and quickly to produce a complete range of 77 beautiful shades. Your DuPont paint dealer will be glad to show you the wide range of tones available in the new Americana colors. Another of the DuPont company's better things for better living through chemistry. Ladies and gentlemen, National Home Demonstration Week is now being observed in 50,000 communities. Through home demonstration agents and 450,000 volunteer leaders, Home Demonstration Club members receive the latest homemaking know-how. To home demonstration work, all America owes a voice of thanks for its contribution to the American home, the community, and the nation. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade presents two stars, Raymond Massey and Richard Carlson. Our play, A Duel with Aunt Rebecca. Be sure to listen. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was written by Irv Tunick and George Frazier and was adapted from the books Eddie Rickenbacker by Hans Christian Adamson and Seven Came Through by Eddie Rickenbacker. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Borries. The program was directed by John Zoller. This is Cy Harris speaking. <laughs> Don't forget, next week, Raymond Massey and Richard Carlson. Our story, A Duel with Aunt Rebecca. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the Velasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Daddy has his troubles and they're all baby snooks. Listen on NBC.